what's going on everybody welcome to the channel and today we are checking out the king kong fpv egg 136 it is the 136 millimeter wheel based upgraded version of the fly egg 130 by king kong now i've done a review on the fly egg 130 and here it is uh, it's just a fantastic brushless micro fpv racer i still fly it once in a while and it's just amazing how smooth this thing flies and this had a smaller brother which is right here it is a smaller wheel based version of it it is the fly egg 100 now this one came with the fly sky receiver and i have it bound to my jumper remote the original jumper remote now the fly egg 130 has the xm receiver and i have this bound to one of my tyrannus and it flies just absolutely fantastic now Recently, I've also done a review on the bigger brother of them all, and this one is called the FPV Egg 138. It's just a fantastic flyer. Now, this one's got all kinds of goodies on it. It's got the XM receiver. Well, I changed it over to the XM Plus receiver on this one. Uh, run cam like CCD camera, uh, four millimeter chassis, and sunny sky motors. And it also came with these tri bladed gem fan style uh, props, a 30 50 props and it's just a fantastic flyer but today we are checking out the fly egg or fpv egg 136 now what we are going to do then is unbox it check it out and take a look at it closely and what i'm also going to do is today i'm going to bind it to the jumper plus remote control that i just acquired so we're going to go ahead and do that and we are also going to go into beta flight and configure everything we need to configure on the king kong fpv egg 136 so let's go and check that out all right so let's go ahead and open up the case and check it out here is the quadcopter upside down and as we can see they give you the same warning that the kv of the motors is too high do not use 3s battery we got the jsc connector this time and we got the xm receiver on the bottom of the cutout on the x frame here and we are also given the buzzer the same as usual with the recessed hole just a nice little design there and we got the battery strap a rubber band battery strap and taking a look we have a run cam micro swift camera up in the front i believe it's the version 2 and we are still given the same video transmitter that's what it looks like dipole antenna and we got the flight controller and the ESC combo stack uh, 20 by 20 millimeters I believe and they I think they call it the fly tower stack and the motors here looking like LD ARC branded motors by King Kong RC.com they're the 1104 7500 kV motors uh, sunny sky motors and they are looking pretty nice. So let's go ahead and put it down. We'll come back to the clock up a little bit later. Here's a cable, the USB to micro USB cable for your configurator. And the little joystick for your run cam micro swift. Here is a bag of motor protectors you can put on if you want. And the accompanying screws. And... We got some prop bars as well and accompanying screws and we got the vtx channel lineup paper with a couple of battery rubber band straps and a prop removal tool and we also get a bag of props as well as the accompanying screws and looks like we are also given a battery and another gmb battery uh, 550 80c to 160 two cell battery so very nice and we also get the instruction manual so really really nice and i believe this side is in english and the opposite side is in english wait a minute this side is in chinese and the opposite side is in english so let's go ahead and take a look uh, some of the specs of the fly egg or FPV egg and the package list ESC diagram motor 
direction diagram, the flight controller pinout diagram, very nice, tells you everything you need to know. And we also have a boot button, we can see that. And the receiver is connected in my case with the XM receiver, is the S bus, so we are on the RX3, so that, that'll be the UR3. So very nice, another channel lineup. And the receiver binding procedure. For the XM, the FR Sky, the Fly Sky, and looking like the Futaba and the DSM, and it goes on to show you some of the camera stats and whatnot. So very very nice instruction manual, and we also get the paper that comes with the XM receiver. So that is nice. And last but not least, there's another little piece of paper it's just a little piece of paper for the run cam okay so that's nice so that is everything that came with the quadcopter in the case all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the fpv egg 136 up a little closer uh, but first let's go ahead and measure the carbon fiber frame here so we are zeroed out let's go ahead and grab this section right here nice little chunky section and it is measuring in at 2.5 millimeters. So it is a true X-frame configuration, just like all of the other fly egg. And let's go ahead and measure the aluminum side plates as well, since we're measuring it up. And this one measures in at 3.4, so roughly 3.5 millimeters. And we got the three standoffs holding the two side plates together with some aluminum standoffs, very nice, with some gold colored screws as well. We've got the FPV egg branding on the side plates and the uh, tilt angle for the FPV camera. Uh, we got the Fly Tower 20 by 20 stack uh, consisting of the four in one BL Halley S 10 amp ESCs, uh, the same ESCs and the flight controller as that of the Fly Egg 130, guys. Uh, it is the 10 amp ESCs. Although they say it is D shot uh, ESCs, uh, I believe the Fly Egg uh, was not able to run off of D shot. I'm thinking I'm running off of one shot 125. So, yeah, I don't think those are D shot ESCs, but it does say it is. Uh, and it's a Supposed to be supporting two to three S lipo cells as well, and the flight controller above it is the Pico BLX F3 flight controller, but this one does not have um, Beta Flight OSD built in, guys. So that is one thing that is lacking on this quadcopter, just like the Fly Egg 130. Now the FPV Egg 138 came with uh, built-in. Beta flight OSD, so that was really nice. So you could change your PIDs on the field and stuff like that. So very, very nice, but this one does not. Now the firmware that comes with this quadcopter, I just checked it and it is the 3.1.6 beta flight firmware. So we're probably gonna have to go ahead and upgrade on that to the latest firmware or close to the latest firmware anyways. And the VTX, that we are given right on top of the flight controller is the Q100 VTX, just like we got from the uh, Fly Egg 130 and the Fly Egg 100 and all of the other ET products as well from King Kong and some of the GT products too, I believe. It is a 25 to 100 milliwatt switchable VTX, but you gotta do a couple of uh, jumping by uh, jumping a couple of solder pads to change it to 100 milliwatts, I believe. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, it is doing just great by itself. I've never had to jump those pads. I've flown all of the Fly Egg series, the GT series, and the ET series, and I have not had one problem with video transmission. So that is just awesome. It is a 16 channel VTX, and we have the dipole antenna, just like all of the other Fly Egg series and taking a look at the fly tower configuration the fly controller and the 4-in-1 BL Halley ESCs are connected together via these header pins and as you can see right here uh, here is a standoff going straight through 
to the bottom to the frame and it is soft mounted on this side here and this standoff this white plastic standoff is a solid standoff whereas this one is just kind of half of a standoff and on this side we have a little foam pad holding that empty space because there's a screw going right through from this side but there's no screw on that side and it plays out on the opposite side as well so the whole 20 by 20 stack is held by just two screws and this time around we have a little foam piece so that it helps to minimize vibration on the fly tower 20 by 20. okay so the camera that we are given with this king kong fpv egg 136 is the run cam micro swift 2 with the 2.1 millimeter lens it's got the 600 tv line ccd camera and it has a field of view of 160 degrees and it is the ntsc system camera and we do have a joystick control connector right here so you can connect your joystick to configure your run cam micro swift and this also has some osd so at least we are given a little bit of osd since it does not come with the built-in beta flight osd all right so here we have the jumper plus remote control ready to go we're going to go ahead and power it on and set up a new model so very nice oled display screen here so let's go ahead and hit enter model menu model setup and we are going to load up a new model so let's go over to model number four and go and change the name let's go ahead and delete whatever it was on there first and put it to caps let's type in fly egg or oh, fly egg or fpv egg sorry fp v and give it a space e g g another space go over to the numbers and 136 or so one three six and hit done and we got fly egg 136 let's scroll down to oops, tx power already set to 150 milliwatts fr sky x is uh, selected already i kind of fool around with it a little bit so we do want the fr sky x because we are uh, setting it up together with the uh, xm receiver which is a 16 channel receiver and that is the protocol fr sky x and let's go over to the bind button get it ready to bind and put it on the side here now let's go ahead and check out the quadcopter Here's the battery that it came with so the receiver is on the bottom and there's the the bind button right here so let's go ahead and get the quadcopter ready to be powered on all right this is the tricky part not to push it all the way in okay get it ready to be pushed in but don't push it in all the way yet and hit that bind button okay you can kind of feel it being depressed no I didn't do it correctly as you can see there's just the red light flashing and that is not it we need the red and the blue light to flash so we didn't do that correctly huh. there you go There you go we have a it's not a blue light it's sorry it is a green light and a red light and it is solid at the moment so let's go ahead and hit enter and the red light is flashing and we are bound just like that i'm gonna go ahead and unplug the quadcopter and yep okay exit out from the bind and let's double check to make sure we are bound again so let's go ahead and power it up it should turn green and yes it is a solid green all right so we are bound so let me get out to the main page and let me go ahead and turn off the remote control to see whether or not the green light disappears
did I repower up the uh, remote control here? Let me go ahead and power it off. There you go, red light. All right, so let's go ahead and power on the remote and green light. All right, just like that, we are bound. All right, now that we have bound the transmitter to the receiver of the quadcopter, let's go ahead and set up some auxiliary switches on the transmitter. This quadcopter also has a buzzer, so we're gonna set up three auxiliary switches, one to arm, one for the modes, and one for the buzzer. So let's go ahead and hit enter, model menu, and go into the mixer, and scroll down. We got the AETR, so channel five, which is auxiliary one. So let's go on over to where it says none, hit enter, and let's go on over to where it says none again, change that to simple, scroll down to where it says none, and here we're going to assign this switch right here. So just go ahead and toggle that switch, and that will save that switch as that auxiliary one switch. Go up to save, hit enter, and channel 5 has been set, which is auxiliary 1. Now go to channel 6, where it says none again. Hit enter, and go on over to where it says none. Change that to simple. Scroll down to where it says none. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this switch right here for the mode. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle that switch. So there you go. Setting that switch as auxiliary 2. So scroll up and hit save and we have saved that switch as channel six which is auxiliary two channel seven where it says none hit enter and scroll up to where it says none change that to simple scroll down to where it says none and here i'm going to set up this switch here for the buzzer so let's go ahead and toggle that switch and that switch has been assigned and you need to save it and we are done setting up the auxiliary switches. All right, here we are in beta flight and I have the quadcopter already hooked up to the micro USB cable and I have it on a flat level surface. And the other end of the cable, the USB side, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into the computer. All right, we are recognized and we are being auto connected nice we are in so we do have beta flight version 3.1.6 pico blx board all right so first things first let's go on down to cli and let's go ahead and type in d u m p and hit enter okay and let's go ahead and highlight the dump files and copy it I have a text document opened up already and let's go ahead and paste it in there and save it for future use just in case and let's go ahead and disconnect out and reconnect okay there we go let's go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer first things first all right calibration complete Let's go on over to the ports tab and check it out. We have the USB VCP on the MSP turned on and the serial RX is turned on for UR3, which should be correct. So I don't have to do anything there. Let's go to configuration and we see that it is already selected to multi-shot and the motor stop is turned off. Okay, so just leave it at that. Uh, 4 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz and accelerometer is turned on so we're just gonna leave it at that no craft name because we do not have beta flight OSD built in which is kind of sad but we'll deal with it uh, receiver is already selected to serial base receiver which is correct I have the XM receiver and it's chosen S bus as the provider so that is correct and the only thing turned on is LED strip here. So, yeah, that is good. I'll leave the LED strip turned on. Battery voltage. Yeah, remember this is 3.1.6. It does not have a separate page for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down to 2.8 on the minimum cell voltage. And warning cell voltage, I'm gonna bring it down to 3.1. I'm gonna save and reboot. and reconnecting again 
Okay, so that's done. Go to fail safe and stage two is turned on already. And we see that there's something set up in the modes. We'll check it out in a minute. So I'm going to go over to PID tuning page and we have some preset PIDs as well. I'm going to hide the log. Yep, 181836. Whoa. And the D's are 2022, which is default for 3.1.6. So we'll just leave it at that. And let's check out profile number two. And that is default beta flight 3.1.6 PIDs. So we'll just leave it at that. So let's go on over to receiver. I'm going to put it back to profile one. And I'll just hit save. We'll start off in the manufacturer's default PIDs. So let's go on over to receiver now. And we are not connected because we don't have the jumper remote turned on. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And nothing is happening either because the quadcopter requires a battery. Yeah. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Power it up. There we go. Okay, what's going on? Okay, now there's some stuff that is turning on by itself because some of the switches, as you can see, the arming switch, I have it on the up position and it's off. The down position is on. So this needs to be reversed. For some reason it's the opposite way. So that needs to be reversed. So let's check out the throttle. Yeah, the throttle is good. And it is already set on AETR. Let's check the roll here. Uh-oh. It is backwards too. So as you can see, this will be the roll. And I'm going to the left. It should go that way instead of to the right. And that's reverse. Roll is reversed. So is switch uh, number, well, auxiliary switch one, which is uh, channel five. I'm going to have to reverse that. Let's see the elevator. Okay, the elevator is correct. Throttle is correct. Now let's see the yaw. Oh, the yaw needs to be reversed as well. So I'm going to the right and it's going to the left. I'm going to the left and it's going to the right. So let's go ahead and change those things out. So it's the yaw, the aileron, and switch number, channel number five. Let's see these switches okay these are working fine okay what about the buzzer switch yeah buzzer switch is working fine so let's go ahead and change those out so let's go into the model menu and model setup let's go to the mixer and it was aileron that needs to be reversed which is the roll so let's go ahead and enter and it says normal you just click it and change it to reverse get out of there Elevator was okay. The throttle was okay. The rudder needs to be reversed. So enter, reversed, exit out, and channel five, which is the arming switch, needs to be reversed. So enter, reversed, exit out, and let's see everything now. Okay, arming. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Yeah. Throttle all the way down. Now it's correct. Buzzer is correct. Well, those were correct. Now, elevator, aileron. Okay, now the aileron is correct. And now the rudder. Rudder is correct. All right, all of the switches are working correctly now. So let's check it out. We got midpoints pretty, pretty darn close to 1500. So the roll, I don't really need to change. Uh, the pitch, I need to change. So we're gonna go back in here and I'm going to go ahead and go back into the mixer. Go back up. Oops. Go to aileron, which is the roll, which is going from 1500 to 1501. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to where it says a sub trim there. And I'm going to go ahead and fool around with it. Okay. I clicked it once and now it's at 1500. 
clicked it to the right once. Yeah, I guess that centered. So I'm going to exit out. I'm going to go down to elevator. And I'm going to go scrolling down to where it says sub trim. And I'm going to raise the values until it hits 1500. Okay, 1500, 1501. That's good enough. And go back out. Throttle, you don't need to do it. The rudder, I need to change it. So I'm going to enter, scroll down to where it says sub trim, and increase the value to 1500 from 1493 or 1494. Okay, set 1500, 1501. That is good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out. So the throttle all the way down is at 998, very close to 1000. All the way up is 1996, which is very good. So rudder as well, I mean the roll as well. And the pitch is good too. And the yaw is good enough as well. So the endpoints are close enough to 1000 and 2000. And now the midpoints are very close to 1500. So as you can see now the quadcopter is pretty much staying at a standstill there you go so you let go of the sticks it should fly just the way you left it it's moving up a little bit but that's fine all right so we are done here so let's go ahead and save we are good to go so now let's go into the modes tab and configure the modes we have some preset modes already auxiliary one is already arming i'm going to put it more towards the top of the switch air mode is not turned on i'm going to put it on auxiliary two that is my modes and angle mode is at the bottom of the switch on auxiliary two that's where i like it horizon i don't want horizon turned on i'm going to turn it off and what else do we got here we got the beeper i'm going to go ahead and turn the beeper on to auxiliary three and at the top of the switch and let's check to see if anything else is turned on so that is good to go i'm going to go hit save all right so let's go and check it out i'm going to hit the buzzer okay now the buzzer is working okay arming all right modes we are in angle mode and air mode yep that's all i want all right so everything is good to go so let's go on over to the motors tab because we are running multi-shot so let's go ahead and calibrate the uh, ESC so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it all right I'm gonna hit this little I understand the risk and I want to put the mixer all the way to the top and I'm gonna connect the battery to the Quad cup there one more time. Okay, it sang a little tune. I'm going to bring it back down. All right, it sang another tune. So now our ESCs are calibrated. So I'm going to go ahead and click on out of there. And that is just about it. We don't have any OSD or anything. So our job in Betaflight is done. All right, so here we are. We have set up a brand new model on the Jumper Plus remote, and we successfully bound the quadcopter to the Jumper Plus. And we went into the Jumper Plus and set up some auxiliary switches, uh, one to arm, one for the modes, and one for the buzzer. And we also went into beta flight and configured the quadcopter and everything seems to be working just fine uh, we also had to do some reversing of the switches on the jumper plus so that the quadcopter will function correctly so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and test it for the final time so turning on the jumper plus and plugging in the quadcopter okay arming Sounds pretty good. Let's see the buzzer. Okay, modes. Okay, so everything seems to be working just fine. 
Now all that is left for us to do is to put on some props and take it outside for a test flight. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until a future video for that. So for now, that is just about it, guys. We will conclude the video for today. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.